Alright, so I'm gonna cover something that's really crucial about these versus the bookshelf variant. Um, the best way to mount them would clearly be on the stands, because that basically makes them into completely stationary, acoustically inert, and they sound pretty much like open baffle speakers when they're just floating like that. But as you can see with my LS50s, I also like having them rake backward and on a slant and also I prevent as much acoustic transmission that could pass through onto the surface standing on as possible. With these, they have feet. The feet can actually be removed and used as wall mounts. You just put them back there and it looks kind of like a fish. And you mount the back onto a wall and you could just swivel them from there. But what's most important is Something about the way audio works, especially among like hi-fi audio versus casual audio, is the major crucial factor that determines whether or not something's hi-fi or not is really the price expectancy effect. If you expect your speakers to be casual, you know, mid-fi, you're going to treat them like they're mid-fi. If you are told that your speakers are these hi-fi, amazing, like, you know, basically, you should pair them with $20,000 Macintosh amplifiers. You will. And that also applies to reviewers. So you're going to take a lot more time to optimize speakers that you expect to be able to perform very well versus optimizing speakers that are marketed as not so um, over the top. These, honestly, are the pair of speakers that pretty much woke me up. I am selling my LS50s right now and I'm pretty much trying to recoup my loss. I did get the cool black ones, which I got specific because I wanted to get, I wanted to use them with TVs or actually in my projector room. I didn't want them for reflections. And they were cool for that, but it turns out I don't really want them because everything that they do as far as with a sub, these actually do better. But the major issue that most people don't seem to get is that you could actually tighten the feet. Notice how hard it is for me to actually move this right here versus these. I could just kind of barely move them. That's going to affect the sound a lot because these things are actually capable of digging down to about 60 hertz. So when you're blasting them, not only is, is there a gas seal in there, which is something that only these speakers uniquely have, along with the rear finned diffuser blades on the black back that the Kef blades have. But due to, due, due to the immense pressure, the full gasket sealed, full metal design, these things kick really hard. So having your speakers being able to sw like swivel this easily will actually affect the sound a lot compared to when you lock them. And there's actually a way of locking them that isn't as obvious as it seems. Okay. On the bottom of these, the first thing you would do is you would tighten these two with the big Allen wrench. And that's what most people would do and they think that's pretty much all you need to get done. But to fine tune the actual locking of the swiveling feet, there's actually one more. It's actually a tripod. You see it actually right there. And it's kind of hard to see. And maybe I zoom in a little bit. See that little glistening thing right there? Yeah, I'll show you. A very small Allen wrench. If you just stick it right through into here, like that, it'll fit and you could tighten it and you could loosen it. And this is actually more important than the other two. And I'm going to tighten, so you saw how, how much these swiveled before, which meant that if you were blasting them loud, they would be wobbling over the place and you just wouldn't get the sound that you'd want. But after getting them locked pretty much in the position you'd want, because they're still going to be able to move no matter what, 
And so, you just want to make sure that they're tight. See how it's tightening? Yeah, see? Now it's actually pretty hard for me to turn this now. Which means that the feet are locked. So now these right here, have a much harder time swiveling now. Like I have to use some major force to actually cause these to swivel. See? And I actually keep sw keep tightening them if I wanted to. So at this point what I usually do is I'll actually set them side by side. If I already know which ones... If I already know how I want them to be. And then I just kind of match them. Like that. So that they line up, more or less, like that. And then from there, I'll continue tightening that up. Which you've already kind of seen, so I don't know if I really need to do it again. But yeah, it's just, just this hidden screw right back here is what I find most people seem to miss. And it makes a big difference when you're actually playing them. Because once they're actually locked into place, the feet don't just work as cool, like swiveling feet or wall mounts. They're actually acoustically dampened so that when you place them on a surface, not only is it tilted, i.e. raked, the way you want. See how hard it is for me to actually move them now? It's actually extremely hard. So this thing's pretty much solid now. It's actually as hard as... It's pretty much one piece. It's as stiff as, as a bookshelf. And I'll even go as far as to put three dots of blue tack on the bottom just to make them stick. But if you're not gonna get the stands, which are actually pretty hard to get now, nowadays, this is the way you'd get them to work optimally is you would actually lock them in place and if you really really want the best you, sound you can get out of them then I would also blue tack one glob there, one glob there, one glob there stick into the surface and yeah and now as these things are blasting the bottom is gonna grip them so that it's not gonna be able to wobble at all so yeah, even if you have them at this level of tightness, you can actually still force them to, to move, but it's just a lot harder than it was before. But that's fine, that's, kind of, that's exactly how you want them. Because that means that the pissing of the drivers, the air pressure is not gonna cause the whole entire speaker to wobble, which makes a big difference, as you can imagine. A speaker like that's actually moving back and forth as it's blasting bass is not gonna create the best stereophonic imagery. Okay, so that would be then, and yeah, um, I hope that helps you out. Thanks.